Rub up your engines! Okay, today I got an interesting vehicle. It's a brand new 2023 Toyota 4Runner 40th anniversary. As you can see from the door to plaque, it is one of 4,040 made. Four-wheel drive, you can go high-speed two-wheel drive, high-speed four-wheel drive, low-speed two-wheel drive. As you can see, it's my favorite. It is made in Japan. It's an actual five-speed automatic transmission, not one of those crappy CVTs. As we look under the hood, got struts too but the main thing's the engine it is a v6 engine with timing chain and it is normally aspirated it is not turbocharged now they only made 4040 of these he paid forty nine thousand dollars for this car that's what they go for if you can find one being a forerunner i'm sure it'll hold its value they always hold their value because they're solid vehicles they said made in japan as you can see they are full frame vehicles. These are serious vehicles. They're not flimsy unibody construction. The frame is separate. The body's bolted on with these giant bolts. As I said, there's no turbos. There's no hybrid on this thing. It is what somebody wants when they want a four wheel drive Toyota vehicle that can go all over the place and last for years and years. This gets 19 miles a gallon on a highway. You might say, oh, that's horrible gas much. Not for what it is, because if you remember the video I made a few weeks ago, a guy from Toyota brought me a brand new Tundra, and it's the one that went from the V8 to a twin turbo V6, and this particular one he brought was also a hybrid. He got 19 miles a gallon. So, <laughs> <laughs> this thing, it doesn't have the turbos, it doesn't have the boost from hybrid system that that Tundra had. They're both 2023s, right? But it gets the same gas mods. Now, of course, this weighs less than the Tundra, but they're both full frames. They can both tow a lot of stuff. And you see the difference in gas economy? It's baloney. Anybody that thinks this twin turbo hybrid stuff is gonna save you money in gas is nuts because in the real world, it just doesn't. This has plenty of torque for pulling for going around with just the plain old V6 engines. And from what I've read, unfortunately, in the future, they're going to be putting the stupid four-cylinder turbos in these things, which as far as I'm concerned is a big mistake. But hey, that's politics and the auto industry where they're all sheep following each other around. Now, you got to admit, it's a beautiful vehicle. Look at it. We'll check out the inside. First, we'll close the door. Man, that's solid. Let's start her up. Now it's push start, they're all that way these days. And of course, all the bells and whistles, heated seats, five speed automatic transmission that you can also shift manually. Check it out. The screen here, it's built in, it looks good. It isn't like some of the Toyotas where they got that stupid screen that sticks up over the top, blocking part of the windscreen. This was obviously designed for the vehicle. And as we look, everything's easy to read, clear, white black and red you can see those colors really easily a really wide angle high resolution backup camera got a sunroof and of course lots of room in the back nice big trunk my favorite it has a real emergency brake people not an electronic piece of crap an actual physical one lots of power knockoffs 120 volts push the button we can open the back window for groceries. Love it, a simple AC system. Fan on, AC, turn it to where you want it. Not 18 million buttons to push, to go here or there. It's simple. And you wanna change the temperature? Look, here it is, right here. Very simple. Hot over here, cold over here. I like something that is simple and not complex. Even check this, the radio. And it's got a tuning scroll, like a regular radio. Of course, it's got traction control, which you can turn on or off. Collision avoidance system. Now, as we get ready to drive it, you can see it's real shiny. Well, it's kind of a funny story behind that. Guy's buying it, and they said that, oh, well, we're gonna charge you a $1,000 for the ceramic coating that we're gonna put on it, right? And the guy said, no, I don't wanna pay for that. And they said, well, we already put it on. He said, well, too bad, I'm not paying for it. And he argued it up and he got it free. Who knows what they did, sprayed on it, whatever. I mean, it looks good now, but the point that they told them it was gonna be that and they didn't ask him 
Well, that's just too bad, isn't it? That's the way it used to be in my grandfather's day and in my day. You ask someone if they want something, you don't put it on and then ask them because <laughs> maybe they don't want it, right? <laughs> and you can't take it off once it's on. Most of that stuff's a scam anyways, but he was smart enough. He didn't pay the thousand dollars extra. I'll take it for a spin, see how it goes. Put on a little AC because it's starting to get warm. And like I said before, it's got a good backup camera. Now the first thing you notice, it's not Nice and high up in the air. Nice smooth takeoff from the normally aspirated V6 engine. Pretty quiet ride. And it handles quite well. That's just stuff in the back seat moving around. It's fun to drive. Now realize, yes, it is a full frame truck chassis. So it's solid. It's not going to ride as smooth as a unibody construction does. But for what this is, it's going to run forever. That frame's going to last forever. And you can just keep driving this thing. It's not uncomfortable at all. It's just, of course, not at a par with SUVs that are unibody construction with all their fancy suspension system. This is basically the best of both worlds of a pickup truck turned into an SUV. What the original four runners were. The original ones looked just like a pickup truck that somebody stuck a couple of doors on instead of having a bed. A little drag strip. Here we go. We got it in two wheel high. Now realize this is a pretty heavy vehicle. It's solid. That's what makes them last so long. So, nobody behind us. We'll floor it. Here we go. But it takes off nicely. Five speed trying to shift and good under full load. Makes a nice sound too. No problem accelerating. A nice smooth ride on the road. And we'll get it going about 50. And then we'll floor and see what uh, passing gear would be like. We'll floor it. You can see it picks up nicely. Plenty of power for passing. Totally stable. Look all the wheel. Look at it. Track's perfect. And really, for a four-wheel drive SUV based on a truck chassis, it rides quite fine. Like I say, it's not like a Lexus SUV with a fancy suspension system. It's still based on a truck chassis, but you can take these things anywhere, and they generally last forever. Their resale values are insane. Their only downfall is they use up a lot of gas, but anything this big uses up a lot of gas. Like I said, the guy with the Tundra only got 19 miles a gallon, and it had twin turbo and hybrid system to boost it and it got the same gas mileage this thing does on the highway like about the dash is it got everything you want but it doesn't overwhelm you with all kinds of crap being thrown at your face it's just like a regular old car tachometer speedometer gas gauge fuel gauge and then other information when you want you can push buttons to get to it but it's not overpowering you with technology and check it out it isn't turning itself off at a stoplight i hate that stop start crap Hey, this isn't doing that. Nice controlled turns. If you're looking for an SUV that can last forever, and you got $49,000 or more, hey, it's probably a pretty good pick because it's normally aspirated, no turbo, no hybrid system, no regenerating brakes for electricity. Things that are gonna break down is when they get old. This is a basic vehicle that probably will go just like the other Forerunners did. That's how they sell millions of these things. They run forever. People don't care about gas mileage to buy these. They want something they can go wherever they want. It's always gonna start up. It's gonna run, run, run. Try to find a used one. You're gonna see how expensive they are. They hold their values. Probably better than any other Toyota. All around, it's an extremely stable vehicle. You feel high enough, but not overly high. And you feel totally safe driving around on one of these things. The handling is fine you want to fiddle around you don't lose control and it just feels solid being on that actual frame now i did find one big problem with this forerunner and it's this they only made 4040 of them. the millions of vehicles that toyota has built only 4040 people can buy these so if you're looking for one good luck they're not that easy to get your hands on and here's some bonus questions and answers. Well, here's an interesting one. It turns out that a Chinese company that's behind building this electric battery company in Michigan employs 923 communist party members. And some of them are directors, right? And I guess something like 60% of them have master's degrees or better. Yet they're building a battery plant in Michigan that's subsidized by the American government. I wonder what McCarthy would have thought about that one. <laughs> 
Of course, I'm referring to the House on American Activity stuff from the 1950s, right? This is a long time later, and the world indeed has gone insane. Isn't it kind of upside down? They were against corporations are evil, capitalism is evil. Well, yeah, they're building the battery plant in Michigan, right? The most capitalist country in the world, the United States. But they've got what? 923 Chinese Communist Party members that are at that company. I mean, you gotta laugh at it, you know? I mean, the Republicans made a point because they saw those evil communists. I, I just find it absolutely hilarious that society has evolved to that. You can't make this stuff up, it's real. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.